Hey guys, this video is about how the body influences the club head. And this is kind of a, a big one because there's so many factors that go on here. Gears is the only system that measures the full body and the golf club at the same time with research grade accuracy. So we have a lot to talk about on this subject. I'm gonna to try to simplify it as much as I can and give you some basic patterns, okay? So the, the body works in six degrees of freedom. So we can actually bend, we can side bend, we can turn, we can sway, we can thrust or thrust this way, and we can lift. So the bodies, those things are all working against each other at the same time. Think about that, six different movements all kind of working against each other at the same time. And then you have the wrist angles and the elbow and the forearm to consider as well. So you've got a lot of things that are moving this little golf club here. So when the body sways, we'll go through this briefly, when the body sways a lot back and forth, okay, that's gonna influence the club delivery quite a bit. The more sway we get, the more the shaft will come, or the head will come from the inside. That doesn't mean if I came over the top and I sway a lot, that's one way to shallow a golf club or to take the path less left. So that doesn't mean if I just get a ton of sway that immediately my path's gonna be good, okay? There's other factors there. There's also turn, okay? So we have turn. The more the body turns, we want turn, but if we don't get any sway and we just turn, we're not going to be able to compress the golf ball very well and you know probably won't hit it very far then you have lift okay every tour player that we've ever measured has a lift pattern okay and knowing what we're kind of seeing an epidemic right now is this kind of and i think this is related to the length that golf clubs are now the companies keep making longer and longer golf clubs to go farther but the longer that golf club is generally speaking depending on how long your arms and how tall you are but we're seeing a real early extension kind of handle raising, you know, a lot of vertical force. If that happens, or a lot of vertical lift, if that happens at the wrong time, it can be disastrous and cause a lot of things. The more we lift, the harder it is to sway, the harder it is to turn. So you can see how those, as we get into these patterns, the more we sway, the harder it is to turn, the more we lift, the harder it is to turn. We can turn still, it just makes it more difficult. The more we bend, okay, the harder it is to sway. So if I bend forward like this, the harder it is for my body to move this way. I can still turn when I'm in bend, but if we stay in this bend for too long, it's gonna be hard to make that rotary motion. If I have too much side bend, okay, that's side bend, that's gonna influence the club delivery. My angle of attack is gonna change the more side bend or the less side bend I have. So we wanna get that right. Then you have the thrust okay so thrust is back and forward okay so thrust has a huge impact on how the club delivers so as we move toward our toes or if the body is basically moving toward the ball the club head is going to basically start to move that direction as well and that can cause heel shots or shanking and if we don't lift in time that that's probably what will happen is that's that's a real cause of the shank but we don't want to have to lift the shaft up very much. That's, that's also going to cause too much deflection and face opening. So the more thrust we get, that, that's a problem. We don't see tour players with a lot of thrust. So really, the club head gets changed by all these types of movements. So that's why we look closely to the best players in the world to kind of see what they do. Oftentimes we're given this question, well, I'm not a tour player, so why are you comparing me to a tour player? Well, just because you don't swing as fast as a tour player doesn't mean that you can't deliver the club in a similar way, or maybe you can't turn your body as well, but there are ways that you can turn your body less, still have good delivery, and still get really good contact, even with a lower speed, or even if your body doesn't move that well. You just gotta know how to match that all up. So, for if you have a player that has too much sway, oftentimes, I think that's a result of the club being too long and upright. They're trying not to hook it. So this is a pretty common thing. They also see good, better players with too much sway and thrust and the handle raising this way. That is basically um, one way to keep the face and the ball from hooking. So I see that with a lot of younger, good, better players and that's a problem. So thrust is bad, 
too much thrust is bad. Most tour players actually have negative thrust, meaning that the torso and the pelvis are actually working behind the ball like this, if you can see this. So the center, they're actually not moving towards the ball. They're actually moving this way a little bit on average. So we got to figure out what works for you and your body type. If you have really long arms, okay, the golf swing is going to be challenged. It, it's a real blessing for club head speed, but it's also going to be a real challenge with today's modern golf club. If you're short and you have long arms and you're playing a really long golf club, you're going to have to really probably raise up a lot and pitch the handle up a lot just to avoid hitting the ground. That's going to reduce the amount of turn we can get. And we need turn for accuracy. So if we don't get that, if we have, if the club is too long, if our body's moving this way, we might be reacting to the club as well. So kind of how the body can react to the golf club as well, not just the other way around. So what we're trying to do is we don't want to have any thrust. We don't want to have early lifting, early thrusting. We don't want to do that. That's bad. That causes a slowing of club head speed. We don't want to have too much sway or not enough sway. Okay, we have too much sway, that's going to get the club path more to the right and downward. If we have not enough sway, okay, that's going to get the path too much to the left and upward. Then we have that trouble with compressing the golf ball the way that we want to hit it. So those are the things that we're trying to match up and Gears is unique in its ability to do all that. That's one of our specialties, that's what we do better than anybody in the world. How the body is influencing that golf club. Last thing, wrist angles we'll talk about today. So the wrist, basically, this is called flexion, this is called extension, this is called supination, this is called pronation. Okay, each forearm is working in all these angles. Some players, like I'll give you an example of Bryson DeChambeau, he goes in what's called, oh, and I forgot one other thing, this is ulnar deviation, this is radial. So it works ulnar, radial, supination, pronation, flexion, extension. I think most people understand those principles. Okay, so the more the club gets into flexion, the wrists go into flexion like a Dustin Johnson, the more closed the club face is going to be. So the more closed the club face is going to be, that's going to require some kind of movement to counterbalance that. And most of the time on tour, players that are shut, they hit cuts, okay, and they're very rotary, and they have shaft length, most of the people that we've measured. So if you're going to have a shut club face coming down, okay, you need to basically have a lot of rotation, a lot of turn. You can't have very much sway or else you'll block the crap out of it. And you also can't have a lot of shaft twist. So all the shut players have what's called low closure rate or the windshield wipers are on slow, okay? So the wrist angles, how the club unhinged, so you have a Tony Finau that comes down a little bit open or a Dustin Johnson that comes down closed, both players hit a cut. So how they deliver that club or how they move their wrists from that position, Tony does it from here, Dustin Johnson does it from here. So they, but they both hit a cut and you need to know how to match those, those things up, okay? So the wrist angles are a huge part of how this face angle and how this works. The other problem is, is if, I, if I'm too shut, it's gonna require me to have too much shaft lean. That's gonna slow my club head speed down Again, Dustin Johnson would swing it faster if he didn't lean the shaft so far, and if he wasn't so shut, even though he's super fast, he would hit it faster. Doesn't need to, but he would. So the more we, the face is shut, the more we have to drag the handle. And in many cases, we also see people sh uh, swaying too much, which is causing blocks and snap hooks. So again, the face angle and how the wrists work on the club face, most people come down with that face way open. Okay, and so somehow, in the last, you know, tenth of a second from here to the ball, they got to square that face up. And that's very difficult to do. So what we usually see is a basically stand up and flip. So the body needs to stall out and stop moving and stand up for that face to get square. And it's going to require a significant amount of grip roll. So if the face is really open, that causes a lot of problems. Most of you have that problem. That's, that's overwhelming the problem that we see. <clears throat> and one way to fix that is to feel like the wrists go more into flexion. Okay, but there are tour players like, you can't just take Tony Finau and say, hey, you need to have more flexion, right? Because 
he's done this at such a long time at a high level, that would be so invasive to him. But if you have a player that's like kind of just new to the game and you know they're coming in with the face really open, you really should get them get that face a little bit more square because there's way more opportunities. The body doesn't have to contort itself so much to get that face square. So understanding these wrist angles and how that moves the club is really critical. So again, if I have more an ulnar deviation like Bryson and I kind of stay there, okay, that's very good for accuracy. If I move the handle low to high and I go from radial to ulnar a lot, that's very problematic. That's very difficult because now I have to time this and the twist. Very difficult to do. So we don't see that a lot on tour. And there are a few tour players that do that, that, um, that actually have, there's very few players that have a really low to high handle that have very good ball striking stats. I just, I have yet to see it, that really low handle. You saw guys like Lee Trevino or Ben Hogan or Sergio, those great ball strikers, they keep that handle down very long. And the lie angle delta is very low meaning that the shaft from start to finish is very low and the shaft doesn't droop that much. The last thing is, is that if I don't do the shaft lean, if I don't have enough shaft lean, if I'm turning too much or if I'm rolling this right hand, which is another common thing that we see, so as we come down here we see that right hand trying to square that face up and the hand goes like, like this, that's a very common problem. So the club, not only you have to get really steep late, but you're trying so hard to square up that club face, that's very problematic. So it's better to just fix the club face, to do the work. One of, my, one of our owners, Cam McCormick, teaches Jordan Spieth, taught me this. He said, do the work early, okay, instead of doing the work late. Basically what it's saying is like, let's get that face nice and square here, and then all we have to do is turn instead of having to flip it to square it up late. That high closure rate, very hard to control. Even though there's tour players that do it, it's harder to control. So there's a balance on all these things, but you have to get measured. You have to go through gears to be able to see what's going on. Otherwise, you're just guessing, literally. Um, we don't have any measurements if, you, if you're just using video camera and a launch monitor. You actually don't know what's really happening. You can't see the golf swing in all these different angles. And while that's a good idea, there's a better idea. You know, let's get real data so that we can diagnose correctly. And that, that way we don't, we can focus more of our teaching time and more of your lesson time, other things that you might be struggling with. So the moral of the story is get on gears because we are measuring all these things so accurately and so quickly and the visuals are so strong. You can really see what you're doing very quickly and you can make those changes very quickly because visually it's so strong, but it's also very accurate on what's happening.